Hey YouTube, it's number Blue 10 here again, and this time it, this is a video history, deck history about Blue Eyes Dragons. I've given like plotted history bits and bobs throughout most of my videos, but I've never actually done a proper history of the deck itself video, just the video about the deck itself. So, um, and I've had a lot of questions about why I run Blue Eyes and everything recently, so I thought I'd do a video response to make it best to clear up any uh, these questions and everything so I hope you guys enjoy. Anyway, um Blue Eyes Dragons as you know is the main deck I run. But ten years ago, in two thousand three, two thousand four, when I first got into Yu-Gi-Oh, my deck wasn't Blue Eyes Dragons. My first ever deck was actually based on Dark Magician. Now I know Magician's Valkyria didn't come out for a while after um for a while until like after um, these two, sorry. Um, but I did run all three of these because I really liked the Dark Magicians. I was quite an obs not obsessive, but I was quite a bit of a fan girl back then, and I only used cards that Yugi used, and I didn't like using cards that his rival used. So I didn't like the Blue Eyes back then. I didn't like Kaiba back then. But you know, I was young. I was only fourteen, thirteen, fourteen when this happened. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, when you're a teenager, you tend to do crazy things. <laughs> um, but in 2004, um, me, my little sister, and several of her friends went to see the Yu-Gi-Oh movie, uh, the 2004 Yu-Gi-Oh movie, Pyramid of Light. And I knew about the three cards you would get there, but I didn't know what they were. Um, but the very first pack, and I pulled Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. And I also got a Sorcerer of Dark Magic and the Two Sphinxes, I think, as well. And I thought, when I first pulled Shining Dragon, I thought, yeah, she looks cool, but I'm never going to use her. We went into the movie, sat down, watched it, and immediately, you know, I my opinion of the Blue Eyes card and everything changed. Um... I thought Shining Dragon in the movie was very beautiful, she was majestic, she was very graceful, you know, she she was an incredible card. I know her effect wasn't the same as the movie, but she, I thought, immediately I felt a connection, you know, here in, in my heart and everything, and I was like, you know what, maybe I could. So I started to trade around for any Blue Eyes cards that the other kids didn't use or didn't want, and I eventually got them. And I'll just show you one of them. As you can see, I've already explained in other videos that she's a bit battered. I mean, my three Blue Eyes cards that I currently use in the deck are a bit battered. But I've had them for nearly 10 years, and I'm not going to swap them out unless they're completely and utter obliterated. But of course, back then, Ultimate Dragon was not out. So I made fake copies, not just for myself to use Shining Dragon, but for the other kids who did want to use Shining Dragon in the little mini tournaments I used to have. And I, I based these off like Duel's Kingdom and Dark Magician just for the 10, 15 kids who, who liked um, Yu-Gi-Oh! in the wee village I was living in back then. And it was quite successful, the kids really liked the tournaments and they liked how everybody was using different decks. I mean, I saw warrior decks, dragon decks, uh, blue eyes, red eyes, dark magician, um, plant decks, fairy decks, you name it. There was loads of these kind of decks back then and it was quite cool to see that, um, that variety back then. And um, But I realised I didn't have enough cards to make a proper blue eyes deck so I thought I'll combine the dark magician with the blue eyes since I can't decide which one's my real favourite at the moment. And my so my first ever blue eyes deck was actually a mixture of the dark magician and that of blue eyes. So it was a blue eyes dark mage deck I called it. And there is a video on the channel of that deck if you want to go and have a look at it. Um, I mean I had that deck for nearly six seven years. It did change a few times, but the video I've got in here is only one time thing. Unfortunately, I wish I had recorded more, but I didn't have a computer back then, so I couldn't do that. Um, eventually, Ultimate Dragon did, did come out about two years later, I believe. And when she first came out, she was £25, and there was no way I could afford a £25 card until I found a site that did it for £12. And that's the maximum I've ever paid for a card, is £12. Um, 
everything else I mainly trade or I'm very lucky and pro at a booster pack. But eventually um, I kept my deck pretty much that way. I changed it nearly every month, you know, with new strategies, new ideas. I tested it out against the kids and my sister and everything. It pretty much stayed that way until I moved down to Cornwall to begin my university studies in archaeology. And for the first year of, and for my first year at university, I was pretty much out of the usual thing in honest truth, except for doing maybe some deck videos because I couldn't find anywhere to go and there was nobody in my class who had an interest in the game. In fact, I was a bit ashamed to even talk to my fellow classmates about it. Because a lot of people see Yu Gi Oh as a kid's game, but you don't have to be ashamed of it at all. It's your hobby, you know, everybody's got different hobbies. Some are weird, some might be weird to you, and Yu Gi Oh might be weird to others. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's nothing wrong with what you choose to do. Um, but, as I said, but when I had to move into and find new student accommodations for my second year, I came across Mad for Miniatures. And I went there and I took my Blue Eyes Dark Mage deck and I was pretty confident I was going to really kick some butt because I, you know, back then, you know, that was, it was the only deck I ever played with and I did very well with it. But I was utterly crushed at Mad for Miniatures and I didn't know what to do. So I went to Vinny and the others and I said, if you help me with my deck, you know, I want to make it better. And they asked me, well, where do you want to go? Do you want to go Dark Magician or Blue Eyes? And I said, well, in all honesty, I want to go towards the Blue Eyes count. So they gave me cards and deck suggestions and everything on how to make a Blue Eyes deck. And I eventually took out the Dark Mage cards and made the deck just pure Blue Eyes. And again, there is a video of my channel of the very first Blue Eyes Dragons deck I ever had. Um... And I pl pretty much started to go nearly every weekly to the Mad for Miniature tournaments and I um, I started to record my duels and that then and that was the pretty much the start of how the channel um, started off. It was, at first it was just tribute videos, then it was deck videos and then I finally got a camera to properly record my duels and that's how my channel started off really, that way. Um, and every month again I would change my deck, you know, I'd always come up with We'll change some cards in the deck and I'd always come up with new ideas, new strategies to test out and everything. And I did okay at the tournaments. I sort of I was sort of like lower ranked average. Like um the best I did at Mad for Miniatures was I came ninth, tenth place, I think. If I had won one more round I may have gotten into top eight there, but unfortunately I didn't. But I didn't care. I did my very best. I was pretty proud of the deck I did that back then. Um, but after my university studies were completed, I had to move back up here because I couldn't afford to stay down in Cornwall. And my Blue Eyes deck pretty much stayed the same way. And of course, over the two years in Cornwall, I made lots of my YouTube friends. I met, met Kayla Shea, Dark Magician 84, Neo Nesta, Skateboard User, Darkness L1989, um, Not a Lord of Light and everybody. I met them all. And I dueled them so I could test my decks and that against them. But when I came back to Scotland, I there was no competitive tournament played except for in Glasgow, and that's quite a distance away from where I live right now. Um, and it was pretty much that way for most of the year until, um, of course, our lovely judges at our locals, Andy Mills and Jason Murray, were able to start the Edinburgh tournaments. And I think ever since those tournaments started, my deck has become a lot more competitive in that it's still got the fun element. I still play for fun. I still play to do my best. But um, the deck has gotten a lot more competitive. It's got a lot more specifically themed. And as I explained in the deck building video, I have my wind condition, which is the Shining Dragon. But everything else is as general as possible. So, so no matter what the situation, I can use those cards. Um, and that's pretty much it of how the deck is. I mean, you've seen the deck video, if you've already seen the deck video of what the Blue Eyes deck is now, then you'll know how, how competitive it is and everything. So, I mean, that's pretty much it for the history of Blue Eyes. It's, um, it started off as a Dark Magician deck, evolved into Dark Magician Blue Eyes, eventually a sort of more fun Blue Eyes, and it's now more of a competitive side Blue Eyes, but, it's still got my absolute favourite card in it, the Shining Dragon, because I absolutely love this card. I'm never taking her out. And 
it's still going to be on my, my main deck. I've still, I've got other decks, you know, I've got Rainbow Era, Rainbow Dark Era, I've now got White Swarms as well. Um, but Blue Eyes Dragons is probably going to be my utmost, absolute favourite deck until the game dies out, I would say, because it's, it's so many fond memories. That's all I can say I have of this, this deck in action and doing with it. And I don't want to swap that out for anything in the world. So yeah. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that is Blue Eyes Dragon's deck history. We'll see you guys later. Bye!